Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi and welcome back to another video for EVE Online. In today's video I want to do another kind of stream of consciousness where I just kind of talk about some thoughts I have regarding EVE Online and in this case we're going to be talking specifically about skills and what's worth training and should you go for the extra mile on certain skills. How do you even really figure that out? Now, this was inspired by me reaching Mastery 5 in a couple of ships recently, and now me having kind of the Mastery bug. So we're going to talk a little bit about the Mastery system, a little bit about skills, how they scale, and how the percentages actually work out overall. And hopefully this should give you some idea as to whether or not the precious skill points you want to put into things are actually worth it. Now, if you do enjoy this video, or if you find it useful, interesting, hilarious, whatever, please let me know. Hit like on the video and drop a comment down below. Both of those things massively help the channel out by essentially recommending my content to more people. If you do want to go the extra mile to help support the channel financially, that's awesome. Thank you so much. There are a couple of ways you can do that. First of all, by heading to my Patreon page where you can pledge to support and get your name in the stars at the end of every video. You'll see that at the end of this one. Or you, if you're a once-off payment kind of person, you can head across to my PayPal tip jar and drop me a small donation in there. It always is deeply appreciated. Makes the world of difference for me. Helps kick that little funny bit of serotonin into the back of my brain that, yay, people are enjoying my content. Finally, if you are looking for some support in EVE Online, two ways you can do that in the description down below. First of all, there is a referral link. Log into that and you'll get 1 million free skill points. You can do this on existing accounts as long as you haven't used a referral link beforehand. If you do that, you get 1 million free skill points. I get a small kickback. There's also the Cat Skull Community Discord linked down there. You can click and join that and discuss everything you want to about EVE Online or indeed other space-based games as well with myself and my community. Great bunch of folks there, really friendly, happy to help in any way they can. All that said and done then, let's start talking about skills. So what inspired this? Well, recently I've kind of hit a point where almost everything in the ship tree is now available for me to fly. If I look here at the Kaldari ship tree, or heck, let's go to the Amar one, because you guys know I'm not a huge fan of Amar ships, yet every single subcapital here is at least Mastery 4. Right? That's uh, been something I've been kind of working on. And even the freighters are uh, Mastery 5 there. Sorry, the haulers are Mastery 5, as are the transport ships, curiously enough, despite the fact that I don't actually have the capability of flying them. Yeah, we'll talk about that in just a bit of time. But this is true across all of the ship trees. Every single subcapital ship in the game is currently sitting at at least Mastery 4. And that includes things like the Edencom ships and the Triglavian Collective. Why? Because I'm a content creator, I want to be able to showcase pretty much every ship that the game has to offer, and so like, getting mastery in all of these and getting the skills up to fly them is just something beneficial for me. But lately, I've been working specifically on just ticking off mastery because, well... I kind of sat there and looked at the fact that I have subcap 4 in everything. I wanted to get some capital skills. By the time I'd got the Naglfar and the Naglfar fleet issue up to Mastery 4 and the ability to fly those really quite comfortably, I then added in the Nidhogger and the Hell because I really like the look of those ships. Kind of stopped at Mastery 3 because it's probably a long time before I have access to the content where I can fly those. Heck, I've even got the ability to fly the Ragnarok at Mastery 4 once I have the skills to actually use it. But again, there's a discussion to be had there. Once I'd hit subcap 4 on everything, I decided, you know what, let's actually go for the mastery skills in some of these. And the first ship I properly got mastery in was the Cheetah. Now, this was just because by the time I had skilled everything I wanted to, the only thing that was really missing was getting 5 in some of the armor skills, and eventually, I think it's under scanning... Is it under scanning? No, it's not under scanning. It's under LADAR target management. There we are. And LADAR sensor compensation up to five. So I just went back and got the armor repair things up to five. It was just the compensation ones that were sitting at four. And then the LADAR sensor compensation up to five as well. And that unlocked mastery. I was then so close to mastery with all of the Minmatar um, like armor tank ships afterwards that I just trained up the auto cannon special, small auto cannon specialization five and small... Uh, Artillery Specialization 5 to tick those off. Then I looked around and it was like, well, things like the Thrasher and the Sabre and that, the only thing missing now are the shield tanking skills, so I may as well do those and get those to 5, and now I've got Mastery 5 in a lot of different Minmatar ships. I'm now working on the mediums as well, 
These, of course, are it was just basically adding the medium projectile skills at that point, medium auto cannon, medium artillery five. The ones that are still four, like the Vagabond. God, I want Vagabond mastery at five. The only thing is, they're long trains. Like, I've got, what, five, six drone skills there that are all at least 20 days. So that's like a hundred odd days to get that trained for Mastery 5. Is it worth it? And that's where the inspiration for this video came out. Now, first things first, is Mastery something even worth really considering? Well, the fact that I have Mastery 5 in a freaking Titan that I can't even undock should tell you that Mastery really should be taken with a pinch of salt. In fact, I've got Mastery 5 in the Azariel, for crying out loud. That should tell you that Mastery is absolutely not a be-all, end-all thing to aim for. How does that even work? How have I got Mastery 5 in a ship that I can't even fly? Well, it's because none of the skills are actually the ones that you need to fly the vessel. I've got things like Capital Navigation, all of these skills trained up because I fly the Nidhogger. I went back and actually added some for the Moros as well because I wanted to be able to fly uh, the Serpentis capital ships. But essentially, what I'm getting at here is that these mastery skills aren't actually necessarily all that important. There are going to be skills that are more important than the mastery ones. And I have touched on this in my uh, video where I talk about how to skill into a particular vessel. If we're looking at the Loki, for example, to get mastery five in that, yeah, okay, I've got a lot of the skills that are going to be needed first and foremost, like I've finished the Ladar target management thanks to getting that up, the armor tanking and the... Uh, the armor tanking and the shield tanking bits are all up as well. If I go down here, uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? There we are. Shield, uh, shield tanking, 12 out of 12. Um, I even have like the medium projectile turret skills all the way up. But to get mastery with the low key, not only do I need to get the missile skills, which again, I'm working on. I just need heavy missile specialization up. That's the last one for medium missile skills. I also need all of those drone skills that we looked at before. A lot of those to go with there. Now, those I'm probably going to get because those are skills that are useful to me. But then I've got all the things like skirmish command bursts, and these are like 21, 26 days each to get through there. I then have things like it was up here. Where did I see it? Armored command burst, something I'm not likely to use all that often because I tend to shield tank my Loki. Um, do I need armored command bursts? Not really. I'm not flying the damnation as much as I used to. Capacitor emission. Do I really want capacitor emission systems all the way up? Heck, even further down, there's the logistics stuff in here. Remote shield boosters. Am I ever going to need shield emission systems 5? Not really. I don't really fly logistics vessels, which means when this fills up down here, the Scythe, for example, is probably going to sit at Mastery 4 for a long time because I just don't need shield emission systems. I don't want support drones all the way up. Repair drone operation 5. It's 12 days for something I really don't use. So mastery absolutely should be taken with a pinch of salt. But again, I'm kind of diverting off topic here. What I want to talk about is why some of these skills aren't important. Because you can look at these skills and think, okay, well, I want to get mastery five in a particular vessel. Should I train all of those skills? And the answer for a lot of it is simply going to be no. Like just for example, looking at the, not the sign of field generator, looking for example at the Vagabond. I can fly this ship really, really well. It's pretty much maxed out. Mastery wants me to have the light drone skills all maxed out as well. Amar drone specialization, Mimitar drone specialization, Galente, Kaldari drone specialization up to five, and advanced drone avionics five, along with drone durability five. But what do those skills actually give me? Well, Drone Durability 5 for a start. What this is going to do is give a 5% bonus to Drone Shield, Armor, and Hull hit points per level. It's already at 4, so I'm getting a 20% bonus to Drone Shield, Armor, and Hull hit points. Is that 5% going to make a massive difference when flying the Vagabond? Like, yeah, it means that they're not going to be able to defang me as quickly by getting rid of my drones, but the drones are barely worth anything on the Vagabond to start with. They're a couple of hundred DPS at most out of a ship. You know, they're maybe a seventh or an eighth of the DPS of the ship. And so a 5% boost to their survivability. Is that worth 20 days of skill training? What about advanced drone avionics? Skill is required for the operation of electronic warfare drones, but also gives a bonus to the control range of all drones. It's a 3,000 meter bonus per level. So at level four, I'm getting 12,000 additional, me uh, uh, 12, additional meters of drone control range. Taking this from four to five would basically take my drone command range of the Vagabond from 57 kilometers to 
60 kilometers. Now, quite frankly, if I'm engaging something with the Vagabond, it's usually auto cannon fit to a range of about 30 to 40 kilometers of actually capable of doing damage. Therefore, the fact that my drones go to 57 is already outside of my effective operating range with the Vagabond. Yeah, it might be nice that if a guy's sitting at 58 kilometers, at least I can set my drones on him. But what I really want to is that going to benefit me enough to warrant spending 20 days worth of skill points in order to do so? What about the drone specialization skills? Well, these, they give you a 2% bonus per skill level to the damage of light, medium, heavy, and sentry drones. Now, I do use a drones on a lot of ships. Every time I fly a cruiser, battlecruiser, or a battleship, it pretty much has drones. So this will affect all of those ships. But it's a 2% per level. I've currently got 6%. Training it up to 4 would take me to 8%. Training it to 5 would give me 10%. Is that really worth all of those skill points? Because that's going to take Vagabond's drone DPS from, say, 130 to maybe 135. Like, that's not huge. If I'm losing a fight with the Vagabond, it's not because its drones aren't fully maxed outright. That's going to be pilot error that gets that. If you're in a situation where that additional 2% of drone damage makes a difference, well... I don't know. I just don't think that's necessarily worth it, especially since I need all four of these to get mastery up. And when I'm wormhole ratting, I'm pretty much just using Galente or Kaldari drones. They're pretty much all I use for the most part. I occasionally use a Mar drones if I'm running, say, electrical abyssals, but not in a Vagabond. And I'm not struggling to run those. Is the extra 2% damage really worth the skill time to train that? That's what I'm getting at here. So how do you actually figure this out? Well, there is no shortcut answer to this. Yeah, I'm actually training up a lot of these skills now just to tick off mastery because I've reached a point on my character where the skill points I have aren't actually all that necessary anymore. But is like the 2% additional damage from uh, Small Railgun Specialization 5 worth those eight days? How often do I fly a Small Railgun fitted ship? Not often. Most of my small railgun ships are using blasters. So why am I training this? Just for the mastery, right? Same with heavy missile specialization. I very rarely use heavy missiles. I've got a Drake fit that uses them. And arguably, I suppose my Rattlesnake does use uh, rapid heavy missile launches. So this does benefit those as well. But is that 2% bonus damage really worth 16, nearly 17 days of training? Probably not. Honestly, probably not. I'm at the point where training these is just kind of ticking boxes just to light those different uh, ships up now in gold. Like, it actually annoys me that down here, for example, the probe, the bust, uh, burst, bust, burst and vigil are only mastery four. The probe fleet issue is only mastery four, yet the cheetah is mastery five. Why is that? Why is the basic tech one ship only mastery four and the tech two is mastery five? It's because of salvaging skills. I don't want to spend 16 days trading, uh, training up salvaging five. I don't salvage on this character. So that's absolutely not worth it to me. This means that mastery is one of those things that you can look at and it can give you an idea of what skills you might want to train, but you really do need to kind of use a little bit of your own thought space as to whether or not that's worth it. I mean, a lot of the hulls that I do fly quite regularly still sitting at mastery four, uh, sorry, still sitting at like skill four on them. Here, the Sabre, which is a ship I do undock quite regularly. Only level four in regards to the interdictor skill. Heck, even the heavy interdiction cruiser, the broadsword, I've only got heavy interdictor four. The Loki, one of my most flown ships, I've only got Minmatar strategic cruiser four. That should be five, right? Well, should it? Because Mimitar Strategic Cruiser gives me an additional 5% reduction in module damage from overheating and a 10% boost to nanite repair paste repair speed. Like, they're nice to have. Are they vital to the operation of the ship? No, they're not. And there's no short way to make that distinction yourself. It kind of comes down to just looking at the skills that the system is recommending to you and deciding whether or not that's actually worth it. So, I mean, once you're down at Mastery 1 or Mastery 2 on these things, there can be some really good suggestions here. Like if you're flying a Loki with Mastery 2 and you don't have much in the way of armor tanking, this will tell you the kind of skills that it really thinks you should have. Things like that, uh, though, when it comes to medium missiles and medium projectile turret. If you're a medium missile person flying a medium, like a ham Loki, for example, 
You definitely don't need the medium projectile turret skills. That's an easy one. You can figure that out. You probably don't need remote shield booster skills. You can figure that one out. If you're shield tank fitting your Loki, you don't need any of those armor skills. Come all the way up to armor four, you probably don't need any of these. At mastery five, you probably don't need any of these at all. It's the shield tanking ones that are going to be important to you, right? And so I can look at this and it gives me an idea of where my skill queue should be, but it does require just a little bit of critical thinking. Don't look at that mastery system as being something that is vital. It's really easy to fall into that trap, especially now that I've got some in gold and some in white. Like, this annoys me. The Bifrost is the last destroyer on the Minmatar tree to be in white, not gold. So I really want to train that up. But, armored command bursts? Information command bursts are useful for me. Sure, shield command bursts are useful as well. Maybe even skirmish command bursts, but I really don't see a need for armored command bursts. And quite frankly, with the skills I've got here, I can use command burst twos quite comfortably, and those give me all of the bonuses and boosts that I actually need. Spending a total of, what? That's nearly, that's like 47 days worth of training there. 47 days? Just to get an additional 10% on top of like an already 8% boost, so 8.8%? Is that worth it? Is the fact that the duration goes up a little bit by 10% worth it? Probably not, because I don't fly the Bifrost enough. But it annoys me that it's silver, not gold. Easy trap to fall into. And I don't know. I don't know, there's probably a deeper point to this video, but it's just something I wanted to talk about. Because I've seen a lot of people talk about like, oh, but I need Mastery 4 in this, and I've only got Mastery 3. Should I train up these skills? Should I really push for those? And I think the answer is going to be very personal to what you're looking to do with the ship. And I think the Loki is the perfect example there for me. I fly that ship a lot. Do I need the drone skills maxed out? No, because they don't do that much for the ship. Do I need the remote shield booster skills? No, because I'm not using the Loki as a remote shield booster. Focus on the skills that you're actually going to use. Look at the skill points available to you and decide whether or not it's worth it. For example, going back to my skill queue, here, eight days for 2% additional railgun damage is probably not worth it. Same with heavy missile specialization, because I so rarely use these. Is 2% additional heavy missile damage going to be that important? No probably should be training Black Ops 5, because that is a big bonus. Like, if I go back to the ship tree and across to the Panther, for example, that would take me from having here um, the 7.5% bonus, currently 30% large projectile turret tracking and 30% large turret fall-off. That would give me an, up to 37.5% tracking, 37.5% fall-off. That's a bigger skill. And yeah, it's going to take me a little bit longer to train, but by the time I've trained these three skills, I may as well have trained this one. And this is actually going to give me more of an effect for the ship that's actually using it. It's the same with some like Mimitar Carrier 5, if I were actually flying the Hell or the Nidhogger more. That's going to be a much more useful use of five days worth of skill points than small railgun specialization is to me. It's kind of up to you. You need to look at this critically and think about what those skills are going to do for your needs. Anyway, that's about enough of my rambling. A lot of the skills on here are stuff that maybe I should train up in a different order, but I'm just ticking boxes now because I'm lucky enough that when I look at my skill points here, I'm sitting on a whopping 149 million skill points at this time. I get a lot of money in the game, so it's easy for me to just drop on large injectors. Most people don't have that luxury, so your skill points matter. I can afford to waste them on silly things like just ticking boxes to get mastery up. Most people can't. So your clone there is going to matter more than anything else. Anyway, folks, that's about everything for today's video. If you do find this useful, let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know what skills you're training at the moment. How will you decide what it is that you're going to train in your skill queue as you go along? Otherwise, I hope this gives you a little bit of inspiration. I promise it's not just me showing off, look at how many Mastery Fives I have, though I know I'm going to be accused of that. And yeah, there is a little bit of that. I'm proud of it. I worked hard to get to this point, and I want to show it off just a little bit. Also, it's nice to always do a video with either a cheetah or a vagabond on screen at the beginning. Happy sailing, folks, and see you in New Eden.